All right. Well, we're back Here for we our are. second session. Yes. Um, you got to do the first one last it week. Was so much fun. Oh my goodness. I had a blast. Well, I'm Facebook excited. Live. I'm very excited about it now. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's do this. Well, um, we're very glad to. I'm very glad to be sitting next to you today because that's exciting for me, and I haven't really done anything quite like this before. Um, but I'm telling you, Susan, I was. I'm just coming off of being. Um, in a couple of different states the last, the last week or so. And a lot of our clients, a lot of those states are getting ready to go back to school. And some are already back in school. And some are already back in school. Oh my gosh, like absolutely. Early August. Yes, um, my daughter's school, that actually we have students started this week as well. Oh my gosh. Um, and so here's what I think is always so fun about this time of year. Um, I think about all of the, the back to school supplies and you know, the, the new class lists and everybody's really excited about a fresh start. Yes. Um, a fresh start. It's a new year. You've got a new group of students. For students, they have a new teacher, a new a new group of you know friends, perhaps. And you know that idea of a fresh start and just being ready for that fresh start. Um, it just always gets me thinking about what are some what are some of those things we need to pay attention to. And especially when we're talking about MTSS and RTI, because it's yes. you know you're doing it. Your school's doing it. You you've been working with it maybe several years now. I mean. For most schools, MTSS and RTI has been right. yes. like multiple years. And the thing that's great about it is that it's it is a fresh year. Mm -hmm. It's you're never done with MTSS, mm -hmm. never. And we're going to use those terms interchangeably. So we might just say MTSS, but it's whatever you call it in your Whether state. Whether it's MTSS or RTI, we know different states are, um, you know, using to, RTI squared as a matter oh, of yeah. fact, right? RTI, um, yeah, know, absolutely. Depending, on where, depending on where you are. As a matter are. of fact, where are you guys listening from? If you could just kind of give us a shout out and give us a comment, we'll look at who's on today and what states you're from. Absolutely. But we're and talk. when do you start? When are you starting school? Then you are know? you already back? You know, we're just going to talk about how to get started with MTSS and yep. how to get started with RTI for this year. Absolutely. And that fresh start idea, Colleen. You know. Is it possible to do a fresh start with MTSS? Oh, absolutely. I think um, anytime you're going through a year um, of, you know, just of being in school and you come to the end of that year or the end of a quarter and you, you know, I, I think you can't help but reflect back on how did that go? And how did that go for me as a classroom teacher? How did that go for me as a member of this grade level team? as a district leader, as a school leader. And there are, I'm sure, were some things that if you're already doing MTSS, that you probably identified that you wanted to freshen up a bit. So um, things or that do at the end of the different. year you said, hey, mm -hmm. you get to the end of the year and you look at your data, because you know you had the yeah. data late in the year for the year end. Mm -hmm. And you look and you say, you know, we did a great job with those second graders. We made so many gains, but I'm worried about the third graders. You know, we we don't seem to have the level yeah. of improvement at third grade that we do at second grade or some other grade level. Absolutely. So, you know, how can we maybe think about our, we have this diagram that we use here at 95% group. I love this pie over here. It's the best pie there is. So, no calories. <laughs> no calories. No calories. Even better. It can be any flavor you like. Your you favorite know. flavor. Exactly. I'm into raspberry pie. Oh, strawberry pie sounds good to me right now. So, whatever it is. But this one has no calories, we promise. So, Colleen, tell us about what these three so, parts are. So, these three pieces of the pie are just so critical. Um, and they're really the things that I think can be that big picture for you in your MTSS model. And so, they're, the three pieces are thinking about your assessment. What are you using for assessment? Um, how are you using your assessment results? Um, your instructional materials. So what are those instructional tools that we have to address what the data is telling us about our students? And um, also, you know, as we're grouping students, what are we going to use? Uh, do we have what we need to address those deficits in, in an appropriate way? And then never, ever to be forgotten, of course, we couldn't forget it here at 95% group for sure, the critical need for professional development. And that can come in a variety of ways. Um, if you work with us, if you're out there and you're one of, you're one of our, our current clients that, that's worked with us, one of our favorite things to do, of course, is to get out there and, and do the coaching support days that we do. Um, so it's not just about the initial startup of MTSS and learning about pieces, but it's also about how do you keep it fresh? Um, and how do you freshen even that piece up? What are what are the refreshers that we need to have? So let's take one at a time. Okay. So let's take the assessment piece for a minute, and let's let's talk about what happens at the beginning of the school year mm -hmm. with assessments, mm -hmm. and you know what tips do we have for getting this the year started out right 
in the assessment area? Well, I think, you know, it's really important that you know what your, your curriculum-based measure is. Um, do you have that curriculum-based measure in place that is your universal screener that's going to allow you to met, you know, to get a quick look at all of your students in a really efficient way um, and then begin to group or sort out your students for you as far as who we need to take a closer look at. If you don't have something like that in place, maybe this is the year that you can begin to look for something that will meet, you know, meet that need for you. Um, so having the right assessment tools in place for your MTSS model is important. Having that screener, that, 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 um, that curriculum-based measure is a really important thing. And then when is it going to happen? If you do have one, do you know when your students are going to take that assessment or have that assessment administered? So do you like assessment calendars? Do you think they're Oh, useful? absolutely. I think everybody likes to know when something's going to happen, yeah. right? We Surprises are not fun. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, you know, if, the, if, if you have, say, a team approach set up in your building, because there's different ways that people do this, right? Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden the team descends upon you and you didn't know they were coming, mm -hmm. you know, that's not a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. It's far better to know when is that assessment going to happen. And then to also know an addition on that calendar, well, when are, when's the next step going to happen? When are we going to get those results mm -hmm. and have that opportunity to decide who we need to take that closer look at? So one of the things that we often advise our clients to do in MTSS is to have an assessment calendar that mm -hmm. outlines you know, when is my, and most of the time, I know most of you do two to three week windows, two weeks is more typical, right. windows for your benchmark. So we're going to have a fall benchmark and then we're going to have a winter and then we're going to have a spring. Yes. But in between that, we need to have some idea of when all students who are receiving intervention are going to have progress monitoring. Mm -hmm. And we recommend here, here we recommend every two to three weeks. If you do it every three weeks so that every student intervention is monitored mm -hmm. every three weeks, then... It only is four to five times that you're doing it between your fall and winter benchmarks. So you're talking about eight to 10 progress monitoring cycles per year, which is very manageable. Right. Now, Colleen, what do you advise when there's a student who isn't showing a straight line progress monitoring? Do you, you know, do you vary that schedule ever? And for what students might you go more frequent? Oh, wow. That's a great question, Susan. So I know um, what I typically recommend um, and has been my own past practice is if you've got a student that you're getting really inconsistent results on, they're just kind of, you know, blipping up and down. There's not that great aim line that we're looking for, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to want to monitor that student a bit more closely because I need to know how things are going um, and I need to know whether or not an adjustment is needed sooner rather than later. Um, so you want to get enough data points that, that you're feeling informed enough before you make a change, but you don't want, in other words, you need to close that window a bit more in terms of how frequently. So are you saying then that if you have a student who you're progress monitoring mm -hmm. and you're not with the every two to three week cycle getting enough data to get a solid line mm -hmm. one way or the other, that's what you do to decide that you might have to go weekly. Weekly. With that student. You might need to go weekly. Now that's not all students, but right. those students who are struggling still, that you're not starting to see some of those results for, um, yeah, weekly may be the way you have to go in order to begin to see that. And I think that also brings up another important point, and that is, what are we using to progress monitor our students with? Such an important question, because in so many schools, I find confusion around this. So let's talk about that for a second, because I think that if I were to think back on all of the schools that we've had exposure to, even just the last year when we first started working with them, when we came in and started asking questions, or when we're on a call with a prospective client, we're saying, okay, what are you doing now? What are you using? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's been a tremendous amount of confusion in our field about which instrument to use to progress monitor. Right. The temptation is to use the alternate form of your universal screener. However, your universal screener may or may not be the ideal thing to progress monitor. So Colleen, how do they figure out if they don't, what might be better for progress monitoring than their universal screener? Well, uh, I think what's best, especially for those most struggling students, because if you're the, if you're the person who's working with those most struggling students, you get frustrated. I've been there. I mean, I've lived this. You get frustrated when, you're being asked to progress monitor your students using that universal screener, but they're not there close to that measure. Mm 
-hmm. So where they're at um, on, a, way back on a continuum of skills, skills. By the way, continuum of mm -hmm. skills, this will come back up again, but we have the continuum of skills on our website. So if you're out there listening, give us a thumbs up if, uh, if you have the, the continua um, for those skills and you're using them. Um, maybe it's a wow for you, like, wow, you've got some, you've got a continuum that I can uh, get my hands on and really pay attention to what are all of those foundational skills and the, the, the steps along the way. It's those discrete skills that we've got to know if they're getting. So the Your universal screener is probably not going to do it. It's, it's not. not it's not going to do that for you. Let's not say probably. It's just it's it's not, not. It's not designed mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to acknowledge is it's, it does what it does really well. Universal screeners do what they do in an amazingly effective way, but they mm -hmm. are not the same as an instrument that gets down and drills much deeper in a specific skill area. So the kind of, just to be clear, the kind of intervention that we're talking about and we're visualizing is yes. where we are upfront saying students need to make their way through this sequence of skills, skill by skill by skill. And if you reach a certain grade level and you haven't mastered those particular mm -hmm. skills, then we need to find out what you have mastered because yes. we always have this expression and I've been doing a lot of writing lately so it's really clarifying <laughs> my terminology but sort of you're thinking around that some more right absolutely and so I'm thinking you know that intervention time is precious oh my gosh yes and we can't waste it teaching them what they already know and too many times we're putting students in intervention materials where everybody's getting too much of the same thing and it's really not differentiated. And that's the whole point of intervention instruction. Mm -hmm. Tier two and tier three should be inter should be differentiated. But you have to have a process in place in your school where you have a continuum, you yes. know what students should master by when, you have an agreed upon set of skills, you're mm -hmm. able to assess in a very distinct way, are they making progress? And then you're able to pinpoint exactly where they are. You don't need to teach them what they already have. You need to start where their lowest missing skill is and go up from there and teach one at a time until they master. That's really what intervention should be. And that's when you get great results. And yes. the book that I'm working on right now, which I've been I'm excited about this. I can't wait to see it myself. It's like, <laughs> or read it myself, actually. I'm under the gun to finish it. <laughs> I have a end of this month um, deadline and it's all written, but I'm editing. Um, so you guys are hearing it here first. <laughs> So I'm, I'm writing about, you know, how important it is to consider that intervention time mm -hmm. precious. Mm -hmm. We cannot waste it. Have to and, hold it sacred. And too many kids are mm -hmm. sitting there. And I learned this lesson early on. I was so fortunate. I was working with a set of schools in Indiana, and I was watching an intervention group that a teacher was teaching. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this little girl, and I'm thinking, she she is nailing every single question. Oh, like how is, she's yes. what is she doing in this group? Why is she there? Why is she in this group? Absolutely. It's wasting her time, mm -hmm. our time, you know, this teacher. It's wasting time. everybody's time. Right. Not to mention, you know, one of those things that we're always trying to be careful of, if she's chiming in ahead of her peers that are sitting at that table, oh yeah. She's I mean, she's robbing them of the opportunity to So process you're right. Learn. I mean, it wasn't just that her time was being wasted, it was that she was answering so quickly. Mm -hmm and correctly that yeah. they weren't listening, they weren't able to listen and be able to yeah. benefit. So that was kind of my big aha moment mm -hmm. where I discovered that too often we aren't pinpointing exactly the skill deficit. And that led us in our work here at 95% mm -hmm. group to realize the universal screener is beautiful at what it does, but it does not it do does the whole its job. thing. It does its job well mm -hmm. and it's not the whole thing. No, no, so no, no. So we absolutely need to have our universal screener telling us one yes. thing who's at risk, yep. who is not making benchmark, but then the why and what to do about it, your universal screener most of the time cannot tell you. So you have to use a diagnostic assessment. And that is a big brain, big breakthrough for a lot of people. I was speaking at a conference um, last spring mm -hmm. and a participant came up at the end of it and she said, we, and I've been talking about the 10 factors for success the schools that are getting great returns with great um, gains mm -hmm. with MTSS, and that's actually the topic of my new book. Um, she, I had been speaking about the things that the schools that are getting great results are doing, so 10 big factors, and one of them is using diagnostic assessments. And so she came up at the end of the session, and she said to me, and it was interesting because I was recording myself doing the presentation, so I had a microphone on that was not the mic related to the room, but it was my own personal recorder and I was um, so I still have her voice on this tape and she said you know what 
our school was one of the first in my state. We were chosen to be a pilot. We've been doing MTS for a num MTSS for a number of years. And she said, I just figured out what is holding us back. We're trying to make the universal screener do everything, and it cannot. It can't do everything. What it does for you, though, is it begins to point you in the right direction, right? Yes. But that's where it ends. Yes. So because it has those um, the indicators, the measures that indicate, it's pointing you in the right direction, but it's not doing everything. Yes. So as a as a as a refresh, as something to consider, make sure that your you're thinking about what what is it that we have in place right in our yes. schools in our district that's doing that job for us because here's one i was thinking about something you were saying um about about instruction and i thought we could shift into that just for a couple minutes um and that would be you know when i was still working in my district and um and i was doing the job at that point of being a literacy coach mm -hmm. um you know i was working to help teachers group their students mm -hmm. and we weren't doing it necessarily the most effective and efficient way. We only had that universal screener to do that job for us. And so, you know, it was the reds and the greens and the yellows. Don't do it that way anymore, folks. Um, <laughs> just a tip. But here's where I'm really going with this. We then grouped them together and we threw some probably really powerful programs at them, but they covered everything. Right. Right. It was trying to do everything. And so, I've learned that if you try to focus on everything, you're focusing on nothing. That's right. And your 30 minutes go so quickly, you're not really addressing what the student needs. So I'm not. I want to um, move a little quickly through the last couple because I know some of you are probably setting up your classrooms right now. You're trying yes. to get your bulletin boards up, and it's, it is that back to school, very precious time. You may even have back to school night tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One uh, of the schools I was at last night had a back to school night with parents. Did it really? Yeah, and absolutely. They school. were going for me to that. I talked to a school earlier this week, too, and they were actually doing professional development days with their teachers. Yes. So let's touch on instructional materials. You need to get everything ready. You need to see that it's all ready so that when your intervention groups start, you're all organized, all the pieces are there, mm -hmm. ready to go. And I want to touch on professional development then as our That's final key. topic. That's this key. Is key. Yeah. So what would you say are some of the things that in professional development, if you're trying to refresh your mm. MTSS at the start it's part of part of our theme, right? Refreshing here. Exactly. And you're trying to get mm -hmm. that fresh start for the year. Mm -hmm. You're trying to rejuvenate the MTSS practices. What topics? So let me go first and I'll do I'll, sure. I'll give you one and then okay. you, you you chime in with another one. We've been talking about assessment a lot. We've been talking about grouping a lot. And I do mm -hmm. think that at the beginning of the year, that's where you want to start. You want to make sure that you have all the assessment you need. If you aren't using a diagnostic assessment, I would highly recommend you look into that right away. Right away. Right away. That is probably one of the areas where you'll get the best mm -hmm. um, gains in your whole MTSS framework. You will see growth that you never imagined possible once you get them placed appropriately. Because you know what? It all is about starting with the right grouping, and you can't group if you don't have the right assessment. That's so right. I would say your professional development should start with some honest looks at your data from last year. Yes. What are you seeing was where you made gains? Where are you worried about the groups of students? And then start by looking at, do I have the right assessments? Yep. Am I using both my universal screener data? And do I have a diagnostic? Am I grouping well? Mm -hmm. Answer those questions first. Because if you aren't diagnosing, Mm -hmm. grouping properly really you can teach the most beautiful lesson in the world but honestly you're gonna have not the same gains because too many students are sitting there getting what they don't need it's true so it's where you start if it's I were true. to advise any school listening where do you get started you get started by getting your groups right and you can't get your groups right if you don't have the right um, assessment the data. right assessments and and having that opportunity then to sit down and group your students across a grade level Yep. Um, which I know we're not really going to have time to talk about today, so that may be a topic for an, another yep. another one of our chats. Um, but one teacher can't do it all, and we know that. So I think as far as PD goes, uh, really maximizing your PLC or your grade level meeting time that you have right now or your school-wide meeting time that you might be having right now to take that good, honest look, Susan, that you're talking about yeah. and reflect and then – do some purposeful planning. Yep. Purposeful planning. What do we what do we not have that we need? Yep. And then get out there and find it. Um, check our website out, please, because we definitely have 
Um, I think too, the diagnostics that we have, I mean, they're, they're efficient. They get the job done in a way that I don't see any other diagnostics. And yes, I'm a little partial, but it's because I mean everything that I'm saying right now. And they're affordable and so oh really goodness. where you spend your money. You mm -hmm. know, it's really affordable to get good diagnostic assessments. Yeah. So we are really, Colleen and I are so grateful. We could talk forever. Can you get that sense? <laughs> So we're glad to be with you, but we know you're probably going back to either getting ready for school to start or getting your room set up or in professional development sessions um, this week. And we're really grateful that you joined yeah, us absolutely. today. We didn't have any questions over there. Did we so I was trying to see, the, the screen is a little <laughs> bit far away, but I, I am not able to see any questions on this right here. Okay. So um, I didn't see any, but we're... But you can post questions when you watch this recorded version as well. And, and we'll, we'll be, be watching. Absolutely. We've been responding. So absolutely. We're going to be on Facebook Live again next week at 1130 Central. Yes. Um, so we'll be back. One or both of us will mm -hmm. be back next week. We will. And watch our Facebook because we will have a, um, a topic that we'll be sharing with you each week. You'll be knowing what we're going to um, talk about. And mm -hmm. so thank you for joining us today. It was great to be with you, Colleen. Oh, my gosh. It was so we wonderful We never get to be in the you. office together. So we're really Usually excited. Usually we're just on the phone or on Zoom. Yep. And, yeah. Or just not even able to touch base at all. Yep. So it's wonderful to have been together um, with you, Susan. And I hope we get to do this again together. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being with us. Let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about. What are your needs? What are your questions? So that you can help define what this Wednesday chat time looks like um, and, and what you're going to get out of it. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in with us. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a great start to the school year. Yeah. <laughs>